Acts the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 43 and reading through verse 47. Yeah, don't worry, Tommy. Acts the 10th chapter, verses 43 through verse 47. This is a passage of Scripture that many of us are familiar with. But I think today I'm going to approach it from a perspective that will be different and new to you a little bit. The message that God has given me, I believe that is prophetic in nature and in tone. So I believe the Lord is really going to speak to our hearts today. Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 43 through verse 47, I read from the King James text. And the word of the Lord reads, To him, speaking of Jesus, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Amen. I want to talk to us today on the topic, astonishing. Amen. Astonishing. If you bow your heads with me just one more moment. Master, we love you, God, and we thank you, Lord for the presence of the Lord that we feel in this place today as we sing the wonderful old hymns of the church. Oh, Master, today, what a wonderful thing you did for us at Calvary. What a wonderful thing you have promised us concerning heaven. Won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the Supernal One. Won't it be wonderful there? Master, we thank you for this time in the house of God. And as the word of God would go forth at this hour, I pray, God, that your divine anointing would rest upon me, your servant, that I might deliver the word of God faithfully, truthfully, fully. Lord, that you would quicken within me today, O oh God, by your spirit, that which you would have me to say. Cause me to remain silent, O oh God, concerning matters that are not to be addressed. For the people of God do not need to hear from me this hour. They need to hear from you. Anoint my feeble lips. Anoint today, God, the ear of every hearer. Those in this place. Those watching live by reason of the internet. Those, Lord, who will later watch the videotape copy of this message. Speak, God, not only to our minds, but speak to our hearts. Oh God, today, cause change to occur within our spirit as the word of God goes forth, that we might be bettered by that which we hear. We ask it, O oh Master, in that precious name, Jesus. Amen. Praise God and amen. Astonishing. Have you ever seen something or heard something and your response was just, that is just astonishing. It is so amazing that it completely boggles your mind. You, you just can't hardly believe. Sometimes, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I like to watch on the internet. I watch on YouTube, you know, uh, some of these X Factor and America's Got Talent and some of the other programs around the world, you know, Britain's Got Talent and Czechoslovakia's Got Talent and Russia's Got, everybody got talent, you know. And the, these programs have been licensed all over the world, so they've got all kind of programs from all kind of countries. And sometimes I will watch 
some of these young people get up there and give their performances and I am utterly astonished. I am amazed at what I see. I cannot believe that so powerful a voice can come out of such a little creature. Uh -huh. Well, in our primary text today, Peter had gone to the home of Cornelius, a Roman soldier, and shared with the family of Cornelius the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the word of God tells us in our primary text that as Peter was basically winding up his message, uh -huh. all of a sudden the Holy Ghost fell upon the house of Cornelius and all of Cornelius, his wife, his children, his servants possibly, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost even as Peter was still speaking. Mm -hmm. How do we know they got the Holy Ghost? The same way we know anybody gets the Holy Ghost. The Word of God said, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. You see, that speaking in tongues bit, and that's not just window dressing. That is the initial physical evidence of one's receiving the divine gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. So they suddenly, these Jews who had come to the house of a Roman soldier, are watching as Cornelius and his family and possibly even his servants and his housekeepers and his maids as they receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the word of God says, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They could not believe what they were seeing. Uh-huh. What they were seeing boggled their mind. It didn't quite make sense to them. Now you've got to think like a Jewish person in the first century for a minute, okay? Uh -huh. These people have been colonized and occupied by Rome. Now the Jewish folks had gone out of their way to stay as separate from Gentile folk as they could. Mm -hmm. Hello now. Uh -huh. Jewish folk didn't have a very good opinion of non-Jewish nationalities. Right. Okay, Those who were outside of God's chosen people were literally looked upon like animals. Yep. You know how sometimes you might know somebody and maybe their moral code is a little less than you'd like it to be, and you say, boy, that person's a real pig. Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody does people dirty in business and they don't have any ethics or any morality, and you say, boy, I'll tell you, that guy's a real dog. Mm -hmm. Well, Tommy had told me some time back about an uncle that married a, a fellow who married into his family, you know, married one of his aunts. And uh, he didn't do her just right. You know, he was out messing around and playing around, doing all this, and he said, I'll tell you, he was a real dog. Mm -hmm. Well, we went to, Tommy's grandmother died, and I went to the funeral with him. This is why he don't bring me to any family events anymore. I went to the funeral with him, and uh, we went in the church, and they had a very, very nice, uh, you know, service, and it was very uplifting, it was very nice, very positive, very good, and we went out to the car, and a cousin of his, and an uncle of his, decided that uh, they needed a ride to the cemetery, so they were going to ride in the car with us. Well, at one point, as I often do, I turned to Booby and I said, uh, uh, Tommy, I said, now, is, is, that, um, is that the guy over there you were telling me about was the real dog? You know, just a real skunk? <laughs> this look of horror came over Tommy's face. I mean, that black boy turned white. <laughs> Then he broke out in polka dots, and they started to glow in the dark, and brother, they began to blink like a UFO. 
and I'm looking at his face, and he's got this look on his face like. <laughs> look of affirmation. <laughs> and I realized real quick that the dog was in the back seat. <laughs> Apparently, that was the uncle that we were given a ride to the cemetery. <laughs> so, you understand today, though, how that we often will view people in terms of animals. You know, we'll look at them like animals based upon their behavior. Well, the Gentile nations, because they did not have the law of God, they were not striving to live according to the law of God. The Jews looked upon them as being unclean, looked upon them as being unholy, looked upon them as being animals. Amen. Even Jesus, as one woman, badgered him for a miracle on behalf of her daughter. Even Jesus spoke words that hearkened to this principle when he said to her, It is not good to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. You remember that story? Oh, yes. You see, the Jewish folk didn't have a high opinion of the Gentile nations. Well, I've got news for you. If they didn't have a high opinion of the Gentiles, they had an even lower opinion of the Romans. Because the Romans had come in and taken over and conquered their land. And the Romans had occupied their land. And they had colonized their country. And therefore the Jewish people had an even worse opinion of the Romans. But some way, somehow, God spoke to Peter through a vision and caused him to understand when these people come to your door and they inquire about you, I want you to go with them. So Peter obeyed the voice of God and found himself in Cornelius' living room. Found himself in the company of not just a Roman, Oh, no, that had been bad enough. Not just a Gentile, but a Roman. Not just a Roman, but a Roman soldier. Uh -huh. I mean, it was getting worse and worse and worse. Everything Peter learned about this man made the situation even worse and worse. If you didn't like Gentiles, that was one thing. But they didn't like Romans less than they didn't like Gentiles. But being a Roman soldier, we liked him less than we liked the Romans. You follow what I'm saying? So this man was not someone that the Jews would have looked upon with relish. He is not someone they would have looked upon very highly. But Peter, not knowing what else to do, the Lord had told him, go and tell them about me. So Peter said, all right, Lord, I'll do what you told me to do. So he told them the story of Jesus. And the word of God said, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Oh, aren't you glad today that the Spirit of God doesn't yeah. care about church looks at you. <laughs> Aren't you glad today that the Spirit of God doesn't care about how Jimmy Sparrow looks at you? Aren't you glad today that the Holy Ghost doesn't give a flying leap what Franklin Graham has to say about you and I? That's all right. Because God deems me worthy of receiving his great gift. Amen. Hallelujah. And when the Holy Ghost was poured out, this is the first time that the Jewish 
believers witnessed Gentiles receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. All of a sudden, everything they had ever believed was challenged. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, everything they thought they understood about the Word of God was questioned. Hello now. Uh -huh. And the only response they could have, <laughs> Johnny, Bill, <laughs> the only response they could have was to look with astonishment and to sit there with, like this lady, with their cheeks in their hands. What in the world are we seeing? Mm -hmm. What in the world is God doing? I'm going to tell you something the Holy Ghost spoke to me this week. You know, the Lord and I, we like to talk. I like to talk to Jesus. I like to talk to him. And I like to hear what he has to say. Because, boy, I'm going to tell you, sometimes the Lord will say things, it'll just blow your mind. And as I was talking to the Lord this week, the Lord said to me, Folks in the church have got an awful lot of nerve. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who call themselves Christian, they have an awful lot of gall to presume that they know my mind, to presume that they know my will, uh -huh. to presume that they know how I'll do things and why I do things the way I do it. Mm -hmm. So it really is interesting that so many believers will see something that contradicts what they've always understood uh -huh. and how they've always believed things. Uh-huh. And rather than being astonished at what God is doing, hello now, uh -huh. they sit in judgment. Oh, that uh -huh. can't be God. Uh -huh. Oh, that can't be God with, with them bunch of queens over there. That can't be God with those fruits over there. No, 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 that can't be God. Oh, honey, yes, it can be. Uh -huh. Take my word for it. Oh, yes, it can be. The problem is not what God has said. The problem is with the way you have misunderstood what God has meant. That's right. <laughs> but you see, you've got to have an awful lot of pride and an awful lot of goal to call into question what God is doing because it doesn't fit in your box. That's right. It does not fit in with your understanding of how God does things. Hello now. Uh -huh. Oh, I want to tell you today, church, we better be awful careful yes, yes. about giving the devil credit for things that God is doing. That's right. There are a lot of people in the church world today who will try to tell you that the affirming Pentecostal movement is nothing more than the work of the devil. Well, I've got news for you folks. The devil ain't never lifted up the name of Jesus. Right. He never will lift up That's the name right. of Jesus. He's not interested right. in lifting up the name of Jesus. Right. And this old queer boy preacher still casts yeah. out devils in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. And Jesus yeah. said, better be careful about trying to say the devil did it uh -huh. when it very well may be God on the move. That's right. The problem is not with what the Word of God says. The problem is with the way you have interpreted what the Word of God says. That's it. You see, sometimes, Brother Jack, when God does something astonishing, mm -hmm. He does it so that we, if we are humble enough in spirit, will re-examine Scripture. That's right. <laughs> it will call, if we're humble, if, if there's no humility in you, if you're full of pride and self-conceit, if you think you know everything there is to know, and you've got all the answers before the questions are, ever, uh, are even ever asked, 
then chances are you'll never get it no way. That's right. But if there is an ounce of humility in you, then when you see God doing something that doesn't fit in with your understanding of how God has always done things, and it doesn't fit in with the way you believe God would do things, it will cause you to re-examine the Word of God. That's right. It will cause you to look a little deeper and see if just maybe you have misunderstood something. Hello, uh -huh. It'll make you dig a little deeper. Maybe. Maybe I am the one. Because God's word is forever established. That's right. You don't have to worry. God's word means what it says and it says what it means. That's, That's not right. the problem. That's right. But to suggest that the church is so perfect... Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. See, that's well, the right. mindset. That's the mindset that existed when Martin Luther nailed his statements to the door of that cathedral. The mindset of the religious leaders of that time was, we know everything there is to know. We, well, we know what God said and we know what he meant. And for anyone to question it, why that was just unheard of. You don't question. We know. No, you didn't know. Because every time man puts his hand to a task, he pollutes it. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I don't care how great an organization or a denomination is. I don't care if it's the greatest denomination that ever graced the, the face of planet Earth. At some point, listen to me now, because some people aren't going to like what I have to say. Mm -hmm. At some point, it's going to begin to go astray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't care. If it was the greatest denomination that was ever built, I don't care if you were so right that your statement of faith was, you know, right on the money. At some point, it's going to begin to go astray. I'll tell you why. Because man is involved in it. That's right. The only thing that can stay true, the only thing that can stay plumb, is that which God has built. Hello now. Amen. Amen. The only Amen. thing that will ever be true and faithful and sure and will never variate, it will stand the word of God said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only thing that will ever stand consistent through the ages is that which God himself has done. The minute right. human beings become part of the process, it becomes polluted. Uh -huh. This is why as the children of Israel wandered through the wilderness, the Lord would tell them at various times to build altars uh -huh. as a means of remembrance and as a memorial. And the Lord instructed the children of Israel, listen carefully, He instructed them, Johnny, He said, when you build an altar, all I want you to do is take the stones that you find, uh -huh. the way you find them, uh -huh. and pile them to create that altar. He said, do not put a cutting tool to those stones. Right. Do not try to shape the stones. That's right. Do not try to hew the stones. Do not try to make them stack better or stack more level. Said, no, don't do that. Why did God tell the children of Israel that? I'll tell you why. Because every time man is involved in the process, he pollutes it. Uh huh. That's the truth. Every time. We start trying to put together our statement of faith. We take what God has given us and we start trying to form it and shape it and we try to make statements out of it to define what we believe and how we believe. Uh -huh. And it becomes polluted. That's right. Oh my God, have mercy. That's right. For instance, I was talking about it yesterday in Austin. 
The word of God said, you know, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. Well, that's all well and good. That passage means exactly what it says, and it says exactly what it means. Uh -huh. But now ask six different denominations how they define holiness. Uh -huh. And you're going to get six different answers. That's right. Because every one of them has sat down with a chisel. Come on now. And they started carving the stone, brother. Uh -huh. So they could stack them up nice and pretty and neat. And make it look nice. Oh my God, have mercy. And in the process of doing so, they pollute it. Uh -huh. God said, no, I don't want you that heavily involved in the creation of that altar. I don't want you doing a whole lot with it. Hello now. All I want you to do is take the stones the way you find them and stack them. Anybody who knows this old preacher, anybody who knows how this pastor preaches and teaches, I constantly will say to you, folks, listen, I, I'm not even going to give you commentary. I'm not even going to tell you about what it, I'm just going to read this scripture to you because if you listen, it says what it says. Mm -hmm. I don't have to add anything to it. Nope. I don't have to hewn it. I don't have to shape it. I don't have to put it into perspective for you. It says what it says. That's right. People are looking today at our church and our movement. And Johnny there, they've got all kinds of criticism. They've got all kinds of condemnation. That can't possibly be of God. I actually had somebody send me an email some while back. Apparently this person had watched some of our videos online. And apparently she had seen us experience prophecy and tongues and interpretation and what have you. And she wrote and said, how in the world can you be who you are? And have the gifts of the Spirit moving in the midst of you. How is that even possible? She was astonished. Mm -hmm. She couldn't understand what she was seeing. It went against all the norms. It went against the way she had always understood things. Well, honey, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And instead of coming to me for an answer, why don't you go to Him? That's right. Come on now. Why don't you go to the Word of God and read it again? You just may find it doesn't say what you thought it had said. Maybe you'll find out that everything you believed about certain subjects wasn't so. Uh -huh. My Lord, have mercy. Right. You understand what I'm telling you today? Absolutely. Oh, ho, ho, ho. sometimes you see things, Brother Jack, they just blow your mind. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this week and He said, What gall have Christians? They lay upon their beds at night weeping, asking me to show them the way they need to go. Mm -hmm. Because they cannot find their way. They cannot understand the will of God for their own life. Yet, they will see something that is astonishing. Hello now. Uh -huh. And they will sit in judgment of it and say, Oh no, that isn't God. Uh -huh. You can't even find your own way, the Lord said. How in the world are you going to tell me how to do my business? <laughs> you can't even figure out how to do things for yourself. And you think you can sit in judgment of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. What God? Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you. The Lord called me as a young man. This will be a fairly short message today, I hope. The Lord called me as a young man to prophetic ministry. I often wish He would have called me to something very different. Because prophetic ministry in truth is probably the most difficult ministry you can have. That's right. The word of God, Jesus said, they stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. Uh -huh. Prophets, if you're a true prophet, you're probably the least liked person on the planet. Uh -huh. Because you're not saying what people want to hear. That's right. You're telling them what God wants them to hear. That's right. See, I'm not in this pulpit today, uh, Brother Jack, mm -hmm. 
preaching what people want to hear. No, 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 no. The mainstream church don't want me saying one word that I'm saying. That's right. They don't want me preaching the message that I'm preaching. That's right. But God hasn't called me to go along with uh -huh. their message. Uh -huh. He's called me to preach the message that He's given me to preach. That's right. Oh, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't make a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I've gone into churches to preach revivals and had the preacher shut down the revival because he was terrified that something I said was going to offend one of his members. And you wouldn't believe some of the dumb things, folks. Mm -hmm. I said something one time. I was preaching a revival many, many years ago. And I said something about singing groups. You know, these Christian singing groups that go around and they sing and, in churches. And the churches give them love offerings. Mm -hmm. And I said... Now I find it interesting that in my Bible I do not read of one singing ministry. Uh -huh. I do not read anywhere in my Bible where singing is one of the fivefold ministries of the church. Uh -huh. So I don't read in my Bible where singers are supposed to get paid for worshiping God. Uh huh. No, my Bible said the only people supposed to be getting paid are those that labor in the Word. Hello? Uh huh. That's right. It means preachers. It means missionaries. It means evangelists. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. It doesn't have anything to do with singers. Well, this preacher got so nervous when I said that that he shut down the revival. And he told me afterwards, he said, Brother, I'm sorry to do that to you, but I've got a few singing groups in my church. And I was afraid that after you said that, they were going to get all mad at me and bless God, they'd leave and we'd lose their tithe and I wouldn't be able to keep the church going. That's what he told me, folks. See, don't you dare preach what God gives you to preach. Don't you dare say what God tells you to say. No, just go along with the stream. You see, all the other pastors, all the other evangelists, all the other preachers, they didn't say a word about singing ministries. Mm -hmm. So if I would have just kept my mouth shut like they did, then everything would have been well with the world. But that's not the ministry God called me to. That's right. He called me to a, a prophetic ministry. I've got to preach what He tells me to preach. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to tell you folks today, sometimes God does things and it leaves you astonished. Sometimes you'll see the Lord do something and it just does not fit in with your understanding. It does not fit in with your experience. It does not fit in with your interpretation. It's not time to question what God is doing. It's time to question your understanding. Right. It's time to question your experience. Right. It's time to question your interpretation. That's Do you hear right. what I'm telling you now? Oh, I want to tell you, for many, many years in the church, I've told this many times before, but I'll share it again as I bring this to a close this afternoon. As a young man, a person who was divorced, especially a person who was divorced and remarried, they wouldn't even walk into many churches. Mm -hmm. Honey, the preacher would preach them into hell and back. You went to church, I heard more sermons as a young man about the evils of divorce. Mm -hmm. I did. As a young man, I heard more preachers get up in the pulpit and talk about how Bless God, don't you give in. Don't you let the devil win. Oh, if you get a divorce, you're failing God. You're not living your testimony the way you ought to be living your testimony. Bubbity, 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 bubbity. Oh, they preach you straight into hell and back for being divorced. Oh, but forget that. You don't want to be remarried. Because uh -huh. now you're an adulterer. Uh -huh. Now you are as dirty a sinner as any sinner ever was. 
But you know what, Tommy? When God began to move upon divorced and remarried people, when God began to extend His grace and His mercy to people who were divorced and remarried, wow. guess what the church did? It reconsidered its position. Mm -hmm. It looked at the issue again and said, maybe we've misunderstood this thing. Uh -huh. Maybe what we thought it said isn't quite what it said. Maybe what we thought it meant is not quite what it meant. Well, I've got news for you today, my friend. What you thought the Word of God said on issues related to LGBT people and what the Word of God really says on issues related to LGBT people are not the same. Amen. It is not what you've always thought it was. It does not say what you've always thought it said. And all you have to do is humble yourself and look at it again and you'll be able to get your tongue off your chin and get it back in your mouth. Amen. Because I've got news for you. God is moving in the LGBT community. God is moving in the lives of people, Brother Jack, that the church would say that, oh, we need to just sign them off. They're too far gone to even be reclaimed uh -huh. yeah by your standard by your interpretation by your understanding but not by God's Amen. I want to tell you something this church one day going to be full of all kinds of people LGBT and otherwise whom the church world is going to have said they're too far gone mm -hmm. but they'll find a home here mm -hmm. the church world will say oh they're They've gone off into sin and they'll never be reclaimed. Oh, they'll be reclaimed here. <laughs> because we're more interested in letting God be God. Amen. Than trying to dictate to God what God does and how God does That's it. Right. Hello now. Our Lord have mercy. Oh, when the Jews, when they of the circumcision which believed, saw that the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the Gentiles. They were astonished. I'm going to tell you a little secret today, folks. You're going to see some astonishing things happening here. I've been involved in affirming ministry now for over almost 24 years. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen a lot of astonishing things. <laughs> I've seen God do things that I've never seen the Lord do in my life. I've seen him do things for people and with people and on behalf of people that I never in my life have seen God do. And it just left me with my face in my hand saying, Lord, what in the world are you doing? My Lord, I never dreamed in a million years I'd see that. He left me astonished. But I want to tell you today, I'd go back to the Word of God and begin to search it out. And you know what I find every time God leaves me astonished? You know what I find? I had it wrong. Mm -hmm. Hello now. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it quite the way I ought to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I'll read it again. I think I'll look at it again. See what God has to say. Oh, praise God. Would you stand with me this afternoon?